the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 140 Job 38 to 42 Job who became God's pride In telling Job of his providence of governing the whole world, God showed himself to Job through Genesis chapter 1. First point, Job was the person to receive the most questions from God in the whole Bible. In the Bible, there are many questions. To look at a few, the first is God's question to Adam. But the Lord called to the man, Where are you? The second is Isaac's question to his father Abraham. Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? The third is Moses' question to God. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? The first is Jesus' question to his disciples. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. The fifth is Peter's question to Jesus. When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? But in the whole Bible, God had the most questions for Job. In chapter 38, Job became bombarded with God's questions. Before then, Job had asked God countless questions based on causality. But now, God finally began speaking instead of answering Job's questions. God asked his own questions. Through God's questions, Job was able to fully realize that there was nothing he could do to answer or reply to God's questions. Second point, the questions God asked Job had its foundation in Genesis chapter 1. In God's creation, humans can experience the world through causality. That is why God asked Job all his questions based on Genesis chapter 1. With Genesis chapter 1 alone, we can see the greatness of God. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me. If you understand, who shut up the sea behind the doors when it first forth from the womb? Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of the hay? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Who gives the ivy's wisdom? Who gives the looser understanding? Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wonder about for lack of food? Through these questions, God wanted Job to find the answers himself. God knew all along that Job was amidst great suffering. God knew Job's suffering, and God knows our suffering today. This is the consoling we can receive today. Third point. After God questioned Job, he expected answers. To God's bombarding questions, Job could not give a single reply. I'm unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. So God said to Job, then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? The fact that God appeared to Job alone was consoling for him. Job could not answer a single one of God's questions. 
Job concealed his mouth and knelt down. Indeed, Job was a man worthy of God's test. Fourth point, Job, who was considered a righteous man of the time, could not conceal his sins when standing before God. Job's suffering was a test by Satan that God had permitted. But now, Job confessed himself as a sinner before God. Job knew that even though he thought he had lived a righteous life, he was inevitably a sinner. This was inevitable for all humans. I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You say, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Fifth point, Job transformed into God's heavenly treasure through his suffering. Through suffering, Job became heaven's precious treasure. Amidst the difficult suffering, Job turned to God until the end, and so was able to receive God's wisdom. Also, the fact that he did not end things with his friends was also a way for him to receive wisdom in the end. God forgave Job's friends on the ground that Job mediated for them through prayer, and they sought forgiveness through mediator sacrifice. As for Job's friends, they had to hear an earful for their stupidity. Job, who overcame Satan's test, now stood as God's precious treasure. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. As such, God tested his people to transform them into heavenly treasures. That is why we should not judge our or others' suffering. This Tong Doc app is amazing. When I first met Dr. Zhou, we were speaking together at a conference. And when I saw the Tong Bible and the way he had placed this one story together, the Bible, one story, I ordered cases of this Bible. Now to see this app, the Tong Doc app, ready for you to use in your daily Bibles reading, this is amazing because so many people tell me I don't understand the Bible. And he has placed it in an order as so that it is one story. And then day after day, takes you through the Bible in a way that God's Word will touch your heart so deeply that it changes your beliefs. It helps you to rise up and be the amazing person He created you to be. Welcome to the Tom Dog app.